Welcome again everybody to this, the complete free Flutter course right here on YouTube. It's presented by yours truly, Ovidius Mazuru. Today we are in module one, we're still learning about the basics of Dart, and this is lesson eight, in which we're going to learn about the ternary operator, arrow functions, asserts, and we'll briefly go into lists. This video probably won't take as long as most of them, because next week's video will be a bit more complicated, so this time we're, going to, we're just going to do things a bit more simply. Imagine we have a certain function such as string is number even, it takes random number, and it says if that number modulo 2 equals equals 0, then we're going to return number is even. But in the other case, we're going to return number is odd. So super simple function, not too much to it, but it's quite a lot of code to do something so simply. And we can really quickly test the function, see if it's doing what we expect it to do. And then we say dot, and I'm in a folder called v8, v8 dot, and it says number is odd exactly as we'd expect. Again, it's just a bit too verbiose, too much code for what we're trying to do. So we could do exactly the same thing using a ternary operator. And so far it looks exactly the same. I'm just going to write out ternary operator. It is a shorthand for if else. It lets us get rid of if else, the curly brackets, the regular brackets, and all that stuff. So we can again just write the condition and we'll write return before it. We'll write the condition equals equals zero. Then number is even on this case. And then the colon, regular colon, to say number is odd. And this is going to do exactly the same as the previous function is number even. If I put the same number, you can see I get the same output. So again, for the ternary, what we do is we write the condition followed by the question mark, which we can just read if, and then the true condition, what to do if it's true, and then the false one. The only thing we would need to be careful of is this return statement, because normally in an if statement, I would say if, and then have the return on the inside, Whereas with the ternary operator, it doesn't let us do that. It would give us an error if we try to put return here instead of here. I'm not sure why it does that. Honestly, I think that behavior is a bit strange, but it is the way it is. So we would have to do it this way. Um, however, if we're not returning something, if we're setting a variable, for example, then it does work both ways. If I said, uh, string s equals and then just have some dummy I could either say s equals and then have the ternary like this and then return s it's fine I'm not getting any error but the same way I can do this I could say i modulo 2 equals equals 0 so if I'm setting a variable I can do it this way but if I'm returning it, I can't put the return statement here. And again, I'm not sure why that is, but it is the way Google has decided to make this. So that's perfect. That is the ternary operator. But this code is still more verbiose than what we would like. The same way I was able to get rid of the if keyword, I was able to get rid of these curly brackets. I can also get rid of these brackets and get rid of the return statements as well. And we'll do that by using the arrow function. So we'll say string is number even arrow int i. And this time, instead of using that curly bracket, we're just going to say equals and then that greater than sign. So it looks like an arrow, which is why, of course, it's called the arrow function. And then I can just copy this. And what this is going to do in a single line of code 
is exactly what our previous functions did, exactly what this one does. Uh, the return is implicit. It will return anything as soon as we're after the, uh, the arrow. So if I did print is number even arrow, one, two, three. Again, we'll see the same output, which will be number is odd three times this time because I have three functions. Maybe you're not convinced. <laughs> Maybe you don't quite believe me that they're exactly the same. So there is another keyword we can use to help us test things more easily. And that is the assert keyword. And what assert will do is if everything is fine, if there are no errors, if it's true, then we'll see no output. But if our assertion fails, in other words, if the condition we pass to assert is false, it will throw an assertion error. And you might think to yourself, hey, Ovid, why would I want to throw more errors? <laughs> Don't I want to avoid errors? Um, yes, but by using the assert keyword, I can make sure people are not using my code in the wrong way. And if they are trying to break my program, I can just throw an error rather than having some strange outputs. Um, and again, I can also use it for testing. So for example, I could say for i equals zero, and that should be int, i less than a big number, i plus plus, and then I can just say assert, and I can say is number even arrow, for example, i equals equals, is number even ternary, i. And I can also do the same thing with is number even ternary, i equals equals, is number even with nothing at the end, and i. So what we should see is that nothing will be printed. If all of these are the same, no outputs, it means everything is working correctly and we have no outputs. However, there is a small thing to keep in mind if you're using Dartpad. Also for myself using this kind of Dart code because this is considered production code and assertions don't run in production code. They only run in developments. So even if this were to fail, if I put this the other way around, it's not actually going to give me that assertion error the way it should unless I enable it with a certain flag, which in this case will be enable assertions. So you, you can see I need to say dart dash dash enable dash assertions before the file name. And if I, apparently I wrote it wrong. And if I were to write it correctly, enable asserts v8 slash it eight dot dot. Now it's going to correctly give me that error. Unheld exception over here. Failed assertion on line 38 is, you know, it's not true because I changed my code on purpose to show you that it would fail. What the failure looks like. Okay, so now that I've changed it back and I run my code again, you can see no outputs. So even running this big number, I had nothing. And I could even add another two zeros. So it's tested a lot of code right there. And these functions were exactly the same. So two things I want you to note from that. First of all, assert. And second of all, the ternary operator, arrow functions, how those work. Okay. And I do have one more thing for you guys really quickly before we head off today. And that is a list. A list in list in Dart is like an array in C or something like that. If I'm not mistaken, Python also uses list. So you might be familiar with the keyword. And what it does is it puts a collection of objects together. So instead of just having one variable, we can have a lot of variables in the same place. So I could do something like list, new list. I'm not very creative. And to make the lists, we have these square brackets. And I'm just initializing it as an empty list. I could say 
pinsi equals zero. And let's do something a bit more creative this time. Instead of i plus plus, I'll say i plus equals three, because we always do i plus plus. I just want to show something different for once. And I can say new list dot add, and I could say i here. And then after this, I can print the new list. And we can see, we should probably get rid of this. We can see in the output 0, 3, 6, 9, and so on, up until 120, which is exactly what we would expect here. So this is a list containing all of these numbers. Interestingly though, if I hover over new list, notice it says dynamic. And remember I told you guys, dynamic, <laughs> We hate that. We hate that word so much. All of my numbers here are ints. So really, I want the list to recognize it is a list of ints. And the way I can do that is by using this less than and greater than sign and putting the type in between. So list ints. We could read this as list of ints. And if I run the same code again, we're not going to see anything different because I was using ints before as well. But now if I hover over new list, you can see it correctly says list of ints. And as you guys can probably can, uh, infer, if I can have a list of dynamic, that probably means I could add different types. So I less than zero, I less than whatever, yeah, but two this time. And let's say, in fact, not two, we'll say five. Let's say if i divisible by two equals equals zero, then we can have dynamic list dot add uh, i is even and colon dynamic list dot add and we can just add i so we can see here we're adding a string if i is even and if it's not we're adding the number directly and then we can just print out the dynamic list and comment out the original list and we can see this one also works correctly we get i is even, 5, i is even, 15. So we're mixing the string inputs with the int inputs. This is perfectly acceptable if we don't give it a type or if we just gave it a dynamic to be really explicit. But with lists, you will almost always see people using them with a single data type. Uh, so that is something to keep in mind. Of course, now it's giving me an error because I changed it to int change that back, that's all fine. You might be wondering how I know that I can use list.add. Well, so lists have a lot of methods attached to them. One of them is the add method here, which we use to add something at the end. But there are a lot more methods for lists. If we go to api.dart.dev, and then we can type in the search for list, we're going to get this. And it's going to show us all of the methods, all the properties, and so on. Uh, this is how we make the list. We can make list. We can use list of filled to fill the list directly with certain uh, some kind of value or anything like that. All of our properties methods. So the one I used was add. We can use clear to empty the list. Index of to find out where an element is, and so on and so forth. So if you go to dot dot dev, you can see all of the methods on the list because there really are way too many for us to go over all of them. However, next time, tomorrow, we're going to go over some of the more important ones, uh, things like map, fold, and so on. Okay, guys, that's all I have for you today. So thank you very much for being here, and I will see you guys next time. So for now, myself, Avidius, I'm out.